the weather slowly begins to cool and summer draws to a close, Americans look forward to the first weekend in September to celebrate Labor Day, a time-honored tradition of road trips, barbecues, beaches, and family time before the kids return to school. But while most Americans are hitting the road for their vacation destination, hundreds of the faithful from the Russian Orthodox Church abroad set their GPS navigation systems for the tiny town of Jordanville in upstate New York. 200 miles separate this town from Manhattan, and the effect desired by the monks who chose this place is achieved. Jordanville feels like a completely different world. This remote area of upstate New York was settled in the 1700s primarily by farmers who have turned it into an agricultural oasis. The landscape is dotted with picturesque farms, cornfields, and slowly grazing livestock. For city folk like us who come here to visit, time moves so slowly that it almost feels like you're going back in time. While this area may not be suitable for big cities and businesses, it's the perfect location for an Orthodox monastery. It's no surprise that in 1928, a humble monk with a bold vision came to this remote place to found the Russian Orthodox monastery dedicated to the life-creating trinity. His name was Archimandre Pantaleimon, and he sowed the seeds for a monastery that would grow to become the lava of the Russian diaspora, as it was affectionately referred to by the second primate of the Russian Orthodox Church abroad, Metropolitan Anastasi. From the monastery's earliest days, Russian emigres would flock here by the thousands on the first weekend of September, thus beginning the Orthodox tradition of a Labor Day pilgrimage to Jordanville. America doesn't have any necessary religious holidays, let's say, but there are secular holidays like the Memorial Day, the Labor Day, the end of the summer, Fourth of July, and they're all characterized by you know, a, a relaxed time with barbecue and um, or football games or drinking beer or doing something, you know, totally separate from anything spiritual or religious. And the whole idea goes, if I'm not mistaken, back to Patriarch Tichon. And it's it's a tradition in the church from the earliest times to take something that uh, has a secular significance and give it a religious meaning. Uh, in order to bring the, the spiritual into everyday life. This Labor Day uh, uh, weekend becomes a, sort of an excuse for a church holiday. And it's convenient because it's close to the actual feast of St. Job of Pashayev. This tradition has survived until the 21st century, but with far fewer pilgrims than once before. Back in the day, cars would line the streets for miles in all directions around the monastery. But all that has changed, especially over the past 20 years. The immigrants who came here after the First and Second World Wars were very different from those who come here today, and they came for completely different reasons. They had lost everything, and the monastery, the community, gave them something to hold on to. It, it comforted them, and that's why they would come here, and this was more or less announced and advertised and understood to be a, a time and they maybe they didn't have such a connection with the American way of life yet so for them even it was a time off from work but it, they didn't they hadn't been absorbed yet into the, the, the cultural idea of you know it's a just a party time weekend let's say so that might have contributed uh, to some degree to their coming here en masse as it used to be and then little by little of course you know the either people they moved away or they they reposed or they just became absorbed and they're celebrating labor day in a you know sort of a, a family way away from the church as more and more people continue to move away from the church and secularism threatens the basic christian values on which america was founded our orthodox youth become easy targets they are bombarded by mass media and encouraged to pursue a life of supposed comfort outside of the church. Yet despite all of this, the 2012 Labor Day pilgrimage to Holy Trinity Monastery was more popular than many previous ones and was attended by a record amount of young people. They came from all corners of the diocese with a burning desire to, quite literally, walk in the footsteps of their ancestors. They used social networks like Facebook and Twitter to organize a five mile youth procession around the monastery on the first day of the Labor Day weekend. Many of these young people were the same ones who took part in the historic Memorial Day pilgrimage from Mayfield, Pennsylvania to St. Tichon's Monastery in May of the same year. As they began their procession, we caught up with several of them to find out what exactly brought them here. I am here because I think this is a great way to get the youth together again. And I know over the past couple of Labor Day weekends, not a lot has been going on with the youth, so I'm excited that we're starting this, and hopefully this will continue on in the next couple of years to come. 
Now, why is it cool to come to a monastery when most of your friends are probably barbecuing <laughs> or out on the beach? What brings you to the middle of nowhere upstate New York? I, I mean, I've been doing this for the past couple of Labor Day weekends. So this is just kind of my role. This is what I do with my friends. But I mean, it's nice to be together with people who share my religion, who do the same things I do. We can go to church together. We can have a good time together. Um, there's just this bond I share with these people more so than people that are not in my religion. So I really do appreciate coming here every Labor Day weekend. Well, I've trained myself from a young age to have no friends outside of church. So really, this is the thing I'd most rather be doing. Um, you know, I've realized that it's, uh, it's much more worthwhile to skip out on those things and to be here and do something substantial with people who I will have a long-lasting relationship with rather than a couple of friends from school or something like that. And do you recommend to other people who haven't been here to take part next year? Absolutely, especially if you've never been to Jordanville. It's one of my favorite places I love to visit throughout the year. Um, so this would be a great weekend if it's your first time to come and see what the monastery is like and participate in this event. It's a good start. I, it's, I'm really happy that so many people showed up um, with like basically a minimum of advertising. I just We just advertised it on Facebook. Um, next year, hopefully, if we spread the word more, uh, more people will come, but as it is, I'm very, I'm very happy. Для меня это много значит. Меня очень понравилось. Я ездила в Memorial Day на другой крестный ход, и мне еще раз хотелось поехать. И вы советуете другим, которые не могли участвовать в этом году, чтобы они в следующем году участвовали? Да, да, обязательно. Это очень хорошо, особенно те, кто учится перед перед началом учебного года, я считаю, это вообще самое хорошее, чтобы сконцентрироваться и начать со свежими силами учебу. You know, in Russia, it's uh, it's common for pilgrimages to happen all the time and the Molodios should be really involved with, with the church. And since we're in America and it's a lot harder to be Orthodox here, it's um, it's it's really great to see the Molodios coming to the monastery and it's important for them to be connected with their roots. Can't have Orthodoxy without monasteries and vice versa. And uh, the monks and the monastery itself it's the it's the heart of the church. A monastery give us our spiritual grounding in life as Orthodox Christians. It's something that, you know, other faiths don't really have. And by coming to a monastery, we can see the example of the monks that live here, see the example of someone who dedicates their life to Christ um, fully, and we can try to you know, take that home with us and mimic it as much as possible in our daily lives. When we present ourselves in public all together, displaying to the rest of the world our, our Christian faith, it certainly helps us to be unapologetic for who we are. I don't think we have to apologize. And in this country, in, in, in the United States in particular, there is, a, there is a stigma about being a Christian, about having to apologize for, for who you are. And it doesn't, it's not true of, of many sort of secular identifications, self-identifications, but, but in terms of Christian faith, um, it's helpful for us to simply be who we are. And, and that we, we don't have to apologize, we can be that, and that's fine. So the procession began at 9 a.m. this morning at Holy Trinity Cathedral and a group of about 35 young people uh, led by the clergy proceeded through downtown Jordanville and up to the, the famous cross on the mountain overlooking Jordanville. Right now behind me, the youth are singing a very unique akafist in praise of God's creation. Protodeacon Joseph Matusiak from the OCA is with us today and he explains a little bit about this akafist and why it is so unique. On our pilgrimage now, we passed by all this wonderful, beautiful creation. We saw the sheep and, and, the, and the goats, and, and we praise creation in everything we do. Here we have an akathist in praise of God's creation to remember that the, the idea of, of saving the world is not just saving the toads and the whales and, and something of uh, you know, liberal politics, um, but it's, it's our job uh, to ask God to come and sanctify the world and to save it uh, in His time. This is a sight that you just have to see. I mean, 35 young people dropping everything on Labor Day weekend to come here and walk in procession around Holy Trinity Monastery. I mean, these kids could be barbecuing, they could be on the beach, they could be anywhere, but yet they chose to come here today. And nobody's complaining, they're walking and then they're singing the Akafis. And the, what you see here in the singing of the Sakafia, surrounded by nature, overlooking the monastery, is, it's, it's just absolutely overwhelming. We thank thee for all the good things so manifest and did, for this earthly life and for the heavenly joys of thy 
kingdom which is to come. How beautiful art thou in the triumph of spring when all creatures arise, and in thousands of harmonious ways joyfully cry unto thee. Glory to thee, we have but the earth, darkness, diverse colors, tints, and fragrance. Last Kondakian, number 13, truly sums everything up. O oh, 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 good and life-giving Trinity, receive our thanksgiving for all thy mercies and show us worthy of thy benefits that we, multiplying the talents entrusted unto us, may enter into the eternal joy of our Lord with triumphal praise. What more can be said after words like that? All of us here have talents. God has entrusted talents to every single one. What we do in our life with those, tra with those talents will depend solely to us. But if we multiply those talents for His work, for God's work, for the work of His church, then it's said here, then hopefully we will enter the eternal joy of our Lord with triumphal praise. Can it get any better than that? I don't think so. The youth procession was an inspiration not only for the youth, but even for the elderly. Along the processional route, we ran into Nina Mikhailovna Solovyova, who has been living in Jordanville for over 40 years. Her grandsons are walking in the procession today, and she waited outside just so she could get a glimpse of the youth and bless them as they continued on their way. Очень, очень, очень я довольна, очень довольна. Благодарю Господа Бога и благодарю молодежи, которая приходит в церковь и поближе к церкви. Это очень приятно, очень приятно. Да. И почему так важно, чтобы молодежь посещала монастырь? Ну, пос... должен же монастырь посещать. А как же? Для того же здесь у нас существует монастырь, чтобы они посещали и э, получались. Как, как нужно вести себя, как нужно Богу молиться, как и все. Правильно? Правильно. И вот как раз за нами, видите, уже идут наши паломники. Да. Смотрите, несут крест. Что бы вы хотели сказать этой молодежи? Я могу сказать. Благодарность только. Только благодарность. Спаси Господи. Father Job has been a monk at Holy Trinity Monastery for almost 60 years. We caught up with him to find out what he thought about the youth coming to the monastery. Why is it so important for the young people to visit the monastery? So that they think about the Holy Spirit, so that they don't come to the earth, the whole world. Как раз. 
Сейчас крестьянство это наоборот это труд. Нужно трудиться, ощущать свою душу, чтобы, чтобы достигнуть Царства Небеса. Если человек не будет ощущать свою ду душу, чтобы у него не было никаких духовных помыслов, никаких духовных пожеланий, то он не сможет достигнуть Царства Небеса. И будет всю жизнь мучиться в аду. И поэтому вот здесь это, это настоящий сетап. The weekend did not simply end with one procession. Several hours after returning to the monastery, the youth joined the monastery brotherhood for another procession to the cemetery church to greet the miraculous copy of the Pachayev icon of the Mother of God. The rest of the weekend was filled with beautiful divine services in which the youth participated by singing, serving and praying. Throughout the weekend more pilgrims began to arrive from all parts of the US and Canada and from all walks of life bishops, clergy, laymen, the elderly, and many children. It was fascinating to see how people interacted, especially with children and young adults. We got the impression that this was one large Orthodox family, and just like with any other family, the youth are its primary concern. By coming to Jordanville, our young people were able to see a realistic picture of what Orthodox life should be like, and perhaps start thinking about the prospect of finding an Orthodox spouse, or even considering monasticism. Coming to a monastery is a total change and the focus is all on the spiritual life, on the Christian life and they see and feel and, and experience something that allows them the opportunity to, to have a different opinion, a different orientation, which is, is absolutely necessary for everybody. I think a lot of people think there's only one option in life for what to do. Well, three, two options actually, a career or to be married. Um, for actually, nowadays is married with a career, and they don't even consider monasticism as an option anymore. Well, I'm, I met my husband here, um, and he is now ordained, with, and we have a child, and um, it's been very wonderful for us. If their monastery hadn't existed, he wouldn't have come to seminary, I wouldn't have, nor would have my brother, and I never would have met him. It's nice for youth who uh, meet each other at camps, at, um, at other events, at uh, conferences, to come and to, to, to the spiritual center, to be spiritually uplifted, and to socialize with each other, and to understand that there's um, other Orthodox youth in the same area and on the eastern seaboard who are also having the same struggles and having the same issues with living um, in the world that is not um, always amenable to living an Orthodox life. Um, coming to the monastery, you can see the monks who are uh, going through a spiritual struggle. They are examples for the youth. But also, um, I think it's particularly important for people like myself who come from perhaps a relatively small parish or a parish where there's very few youth. Um, you know, you, you make close friends, but it's a good way to connect with others, uh, with other Orthodox youth, and you may meet your future spouse like we did. We met here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, on Labor Day of 2000, Two or 2001 was the first time that I met Masha on top of the bell tower <laughs> and um, after several years of friendship we started dating and we got married in July of this year. As time goes by and the current generation of youth enters into adulthood, monasteries like Holy Trinity Monastery in Jordanville remain a beacon of orthodoxy, guiding them along the path of the cross. Oftentimes we think that the generational gap between today's youth and the monastics is too wide to overcome. But this could not be further from the truth. All of the monks in Jordanville, regardless of age or rank, care for the young people and are acutely aware of the temptations they face each and every day. While society is constantly searching for new answers to the meaning of life and everything in it, we need places like Holy Trinity Monastery now more than ever. According to statistics, there's a, a book that just came out last year that 250 young people between the ages of, I think, around 18 and 25 were interviewed. And it's not that uh, they, they believe in bad things. It's not that they have sort of an anarchistic view or something. They, they admitted up front that they don't know what they believe in. They absolutely are just t totally confused and, and, and very good-natured about it. But th the people that did the interviews were shocked because they didn't know that these graduates from high school and early years in college were at this frame of mind, in this frame of mind. Young people are always questioning the meaning of what's going on uh, and significance of everything. And in order to find the answer for that, you have to have a base to work from. And in the, the monastery and generally orthodoxy, and the gospel gives the base for young people to find 
the answer to their questions about what's the meaning of all of this, and uh, how could you, how can that be the not be the most important thing, since they're even willing to admit that they don't know what to think anymore, and it's no wonder because it's it's the mass media, it's it's the education, it's the whole the whole culture around us is fed them this. But if you have as your basis the gospel, and you can use that to check the meaning of things which is embodied in the monastery, in our monastic way of life, then it'll, it'll give you some sort of a stability that otherwise you, you wouldn't have. So these things, this is all part of our significance. And uh, the young people, I mean, I don't, young people are people. <laughs> and uh, of course, it's a special thing. And I feel I can keep up with what's going on. I know exactly what's happening. And I see, of course, this is the answer for everybody. And that doesn't mean they have to come here and become uh, a monk or a nun, but it's in their search for meaning, they need to have a base, they need to have an anchor, and this is it. This is, the, this is for them, this is the answer to their problems, really. And it's not the specific problems, but it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a measuring stick that people don't have anymore. They need to have something to fall back on. And the gospel, that's it. The life in Christ is the answer. Our Eastern American Diocesan Media Office has been covering the Labor Day pilgrimage to Jordanville for four years now. And every year you seem to hear the same thing from all sorts of different people, clergy. Everybody talks about how things used to be. They talk about how there used to be thousands of people that would come here. Parishes would shut down and come here by the busload. Young people just couldn't wait to get to the monastery. And yet, for the last 10 to 15 years, this has slowly been dying in our church. And this isn't only true about the monasteries. We talk to priests who are saddened by the church attendance rate. It seems like nobody wants to come to vigil anymore. Sundays seem to be a chore. Feast days, forget it. And we're all waiting. Everybody's waiting for that one moment when this is going to change. Well, that moment is now. What we saw this weekend is hard to explain to you. These young people that came here Nobody asked them to come here. Nobody forced them to come here. They came here of their own accord. This is the future of our church, and this is the way that things are going to change. The only way that people are going to return to the monasteries and return to the holy places is if the youth will lead the way. If the young people will come here, they will meet other young people here. They will get married. They will bring their children here. And slowly, thousands of people will begin to return to this holy place. These are the type of people that we met this weekend. These are the type of people that we talk to, and these are the type of people that we need to support. Everything that we have done here this weekend, we have done with the intention of helping our youth, of helping them return to the monastery, and helping them to continue the growth that we see in our Eastern American Diocese and in the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia as a whole. Please, anything you can do will go to promote documentaries such as these so that young people all around the world can see what their peers are doing. Young people nowadays, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter. It's, it's, it's a media age. If we don't reach them on YouTube, if we don't reach them through Facebook, we may not have another chance to explain to them the importance of visiting these monasteries. On behalf of all the staff of the Eastern American Diocesan Media Office, we thank you for watching this presentation, and we hope that you will be able to help us, help the diocese, and help our church.